Welcome back to TEC Tube. I'm Ryan Hoger and today we're going to be working on installing a system sensor duct smoke detector to a Bryant Evolution control system. The same process would apply to an Infinity system from Carrier or an ICP ion system. So the detector itself comes with multiple pieces. The actual detector and it comes with a bag that has some mounting instructions which we'll use in a minute. It has a exhaust tube and then you have to separately order the intake tube. We make you order it separately because we need to have it be the length of the duct. So on a residential system, the 1.5 foot is fine. Commercial, I may need three, five, or 10 feet in length. And then there's also a little red cap that we're gonna take out of the bag and put it on the end of this guy as well. So we'll show you how to mount this up. Let's get started. We're gonna mount this up on our supply duct. You could also mount it on the return. Either method would be acceptable. Commercially, in certain areas, code will require one or the other, but residentially, there is no code requirement for this. It's optional. So I could have mounted it horizontally like that, or this particular brand and model, I can reconfigure it like this. There's a small screw in the back that would hold that together. So I'm gonna go with the, with the vertical option. I think it's a little bit cleaner for this dimension of duct. So I'll put this screw back in on the back side here. The two sampling tubes. The exhaust tube is gonna go on this one here just snaps in and then the supply tube is going to go on this one here but I have to pay attention to which way I have the holes. In this case I have an upflow furnace and I'm putting it on this horizontal path so I want the holes to be so the air is coming up into them that way. So the airflow goes directly into the holes themselves. So in my case I'm going to mount it on there like that. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I still have to mount the detector on the, on the unit for right now. The other side of that equation at the end of this tube, i got to put this red cap on here. They ship that separately, once again, because this tube comes in different lengths. So i got to put this red cap on the end, otherwise I'll be sampling too much from the end instead of sampling it at evenly spaced distribution points. All right, next step in mounting this guy is to use this wonderful little sticker we have here. The sticker laid out, if I had, a, had it in the uh, uh, horizontal plane, I'd mount it like this, using that screw hole. In my case, I'm going to fold it in half because I'm mounting it vertically. Here's my two holes that I'm going to drill for the sampling tubes, and there's my two screw holes that I'm going to use as a starter. So let's put this sticker on here to make it easy to line up for myself. All right. I'm going to use a unit bit in this case, and if you read the instructions, I should use a 1 and 3 8 inch hole. So I'm going to use that. I could use other methods of cutting the duct, but this just happens to be a fairly easy one. So I'll make the 1 and 3 8 hole here and here, and then I'll go grab my drill bit, and I'll make a small starter pilot hole for the two mounting screws to hold the assembly on there. Let's go ahead and do that then. Now that we got this bad boy mounted, we're going to have four wires that we're going to connect to here. Two of them are going to be our alarm contact, and two of them are to power the detector itself. So we're going to use these two red wires for our contact. So we have lots of stuff we can wire to on here. Most of that has nothing to do with our life. The same detector can be used for all kinds of commercial systems and communicating systems and all kinds of stuff like that. In our case, I want to use either auxiliary A or auxiliary B alarm output, so I'll just pick A, and my choices are normally closed or normally open. I want normally closed. So that means that it's expecting this to be no smoke when it gives me a signal down to my furnace. And if I do have a smoke, it breaks the signal. So I'll go to NC, normally closed, with my other wire. It doesn't matter which one, they're polarity insensitive. I'll go to the common. So in this case, terminal 16 and terminal 6 are what they're labeled. 6 is common, 16 is normally closed. And I have my other two wires. These will be polarity sensitive. These are going to be powering up. Uh, in my case, I'm going to steal power from the furnace because I already have a 24 volt transformer and I can run low voltage wire. You could also power these with 120 if you wanted to in a more commercial application. So I'm going to go to terminals 9 and 10 with these two. And they're labeled 24V AC or DC, you could use either. In the case of residential furnaces, I'm going to have 24 AC readily available to me. 
and we'll terminate the other one. And then we can screw the cover back on and then we can go ahead and take a look at this down at the furnace and wire the other side up. Down here at the furnace, we're going to take our two red contact wires and we are going to terminate them on R. And on to G. That's no longer a fan signal on this particular application with these thermostats. That is a miscellaneous input. So that's R and G. Then we also need to power that detector. All right, so we had that on black and white at the detector. So the easiest way to get that, I could take it off the transformer, but I already happen to have a thermostat strip where I can conveniently grab common off the transformer. And then I can also grab red again, hot off the transformer. So I could have done this with three wires going from the furnace over to the detector, but I happen to use it with, do it with four in this case. Ours being used twice. Now that we have the detector wired up to the furnace input, we need to tell the wall control, then Bryant Evolution, Carrier Infinity, or ICP Ion wall control, what to do with that message. Right, so once I'm in the uh, service screens, I'm gonna select Setup. I'm gonna select Furnace because I'm wired to the furnace circuit board. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says G terminal. It normally would look like this. It would have nothing on it. I'm going to say, yes, I have a G terminal, right? Because I'm not using it for a thermostat input anymore. I'm using it for something miscellaneous. I could pick several miscellaneous things. We have another video explaining how all those work. In my case, I'm going to pick shutdown because I want this thing to turn off if I detect smoke. I could pick normally closed or normally open. I wired the detector as normally closed earlier. So that's what I'm going to select here. And I'm going to press save. Now I can test it and we'll get the alarm message to show up on the stat and then email or text message out to the consumer as well. The last step here is to test it to make sure it actually works. Now we don't want to start a fire in the house and wait for smoke to get back to the detector. That would be not a smart way to test it. So we're going to push the test button on the detector itself and make sure the message pushes all the way through to our system. So there we got our alarm, alarm auxiliary input shutdown. If I had this set up correctly with the homeowner, it would also send them an email and or a text message letting them know the same thing. I can click on it and it'll tell them to who, who to call, which would be your contractor name there. Instead of Brian, it would have your name and contact info on there. And they would know who to call for support. And in this case, the fan, AC, and heating would all be shut off as well when I have this shutdown alarm. So the purpose of having this smoke detector, if I have a fire anywhere in the home, anywhere at all, that air is gonna get sucked back into the return of my system at some point. And I can detect that with this duct smoke detector and shut everything down. We don't want to use the duct system to continue to distribute smoke throughout the rest of the house, right? Shut it all down and stop that process. And then additionally, alert the customer in case they were not home or whatever. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the next video.